Hello people of the internet, I'm Alan, and in today's video I'm going to be trying to survive 10 days in better Minecraft 4 in the newest Minecraft update 1.20. I know 10 days isn't a lot, but I don't have a lot of time to record, so I try to make videos whenever I can. Plus who knows, maybe one day we'll reach 100 days. It took me many attempts as you can tell from the background footage, uh, which I know is kind of pathetic for only 10 days, but as I always say, it wouldn't be one of my videos without at least one stupid death. If you do go on to enjoy this video, please let me know down in the comments below so I know to keep creating content on this pack. I'm going to be trying to put out 10 days of multiple packs, uh, both hardcore and just normal survival. Uh, so if that does sound good to you and you have a pack in mind that you want someone to cover on YouTube, uh, please let me know and I'll consider covering it. Also, uh, I will be continuing to do Dawncraft. I just uh, wanted to get some of these like 10 days videos out first so I can get some new content on my channel. Uh, but yeah, Dawncraft will probably be one of my next couple videos. Anyway, enough with the intro, let's get into Day Zero. Day Zero, I started in a lavender forest and broke a jacaranda tree for some basic tools. This mod pack has the tree capitator mod, so I got a wooden axe and began chopping. While I'm doing some of the basics, I'll kind of explain what this pack is. Um, I'm sure pretty much all of you are uh, aware of the pack Better Minecraft. Well, this is just the same pack, but moved up to 1.20. But since there are quite a few less mods right now due to the update, uh, this pack is very bare bones vanilla plus. Uh, just for now though, because whenever the mods get updates, so will this mod pack. So if you want to see me cover this mod pack more whenever new stuff is added to it, uh, make sure to let me know down in the comments below so that way I can uh, know people are enjoying this pack. After getting quite a bit of wood, I traveled across the seasonal forest until I stumbled across an island that I thought of making a home on. You know, because I am island. <laughs> so funny. Anyway, the island didn't suit my wants, so I left. Right off the coast, I found a huge fleet of ships. I thought I might actually get to run into the great captain, Monkey D. Luffy. However, it was just some villagers closing in on a ship of villagers. I decided to loot all the village ships and came out with some pretty great loot. I got plenty of crops and quite a few ores, as well as a few sponges. After sailing away from the sea village, I came across a cottage on a hill. Due to previous lives, I did recognize this, and it was an illusioner's hut. I broke through the back and blocked off the illusioner's only path to me. I then looted his upstairs. All I got from his attic, however, was some leather. Luckily, I knew there was a chest downstairs on the main floor, so therefore I broke down into the dungeon where he kept a villager hostage. I then broke through the floor and looted the chest from below. This chest had some potions, a bow with power 1, and a bundle. This bundle will be the saving grace for our adventures because it allows me to keep smaller items such as like saplings and seeds uh, that come in smaller quantities and take them with me, so I won't have to leave as much loot behind. As I finished looting the sun rose, which makes this day 1, I left the villager locked up where I found him and began to mess with the illusioner. He immediately cast a dark veil over my eyes so I shut the door and ran out. I then ran into some dogs that he had locked up, and I tamed all three of them. If anyone wants to name them in the comments below, uh, feel free to do so. If I don't get any names by the next video, I'll probably just give them some anime names. Anyway, I tried to mess with the illusioner yet again and immediately got put in my place. We ended up switching spots with me in the house and him outside. Luckily though, I found an invisibility potion inside the house while I was looting it. So I popped it down the old gullet and ran away like the great Joseph Joestar taught me. I kept running until I came across a giant structure called the bathhouse, which I thought seemed safe because on the map there were no mobs spawning. When I got inside, I was given my favorite block to not have to craft, which if you don't know is the blast furnace, because I hate cooking stone twice. When I got higher up, I ran into some husks cosplaying as ghosts. I didn't think it was a good idea to keep fighting these guys anymore due to the fact I had died to weaker things in my previous lives. I ran back out of the bathhouse and soon discovered a ruined structure with a skeleton spawner. I looted the chest, but fooled around for a bit too long and got brought down to half health. However, between me dodging the arrows and my dogs attacking the skeletons, I barely managed to survive. I then popped a night vision potion and ran through the night, desperately looking for somewhere to live. On my way to find a home, I found yet another dog to join the pack. I eventually pulled my boat up on a pillager tower and put my bed down to sleep away the night. On day two, like a freaking idiot, I forgot to hit the record button for a minute. However, all you guys really missed was my dogs killing some pillagers and me getting a half-broken enchanted sword from the bottom of the pedestal that I fell asleep on the night before. 
Anyway, I then went to the top of the pillager tower and killed the leader, giving me bad omen. That's somewhat important for you to know for the future, by the way. I also got two armor trims from that chest. I haven't played much 1.20, so these are actually my first armor trims. However, I didn't really use them in this video. After looting the pillager tower, I began to look for a home once more. I ran across a hill and fell down it, barely missing a puddle of lava on my way down. I spotted a village in the distance and began the run towards it. I was about to swim across the little bit of water between me and the village when I barely realized I had bad omen. I then turned around and ran away, looking for a cow to get some milk. On the way back, I killed many animals to heal my dogs from the battle with the pillagers, and then I stumbled upon a little landmass in the water near the village. I decided to call this island home for now and set all of my belongings down, also leaving my pets there. I dubbed this place the island because, you know, I am all so creative. And then I went to sleep. On day 3 I looted the village of all its important workstations and loot. I got a couple of diamonds from the blacksmith and a waystone for the island. I also found a ruined portal that didn't really give me much, and by this time it was already night so I headed home and slept the night away. Day 4 I decided to terraform the land near my island for a farm. Yes I started making the farm before my house even though I have a ton of extra food, don't worry about it. Anyway I decided to separate the crops with one block between them because I wanted them to have their own areas. This didn't last long, however, because I suck at terraforming and got tired of it, so I ended up with a potato field, and then a carrot and flax field. You may be wondering why I didn't plant any beetroot even though I had the seeds to do so. Probably not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. This mod pack has seasons and each crop has its own fertile seasons. All the crops I'm growing right now are fertile in spring, which is the season we started with. Pumpkins and beetroots, however, are fertile in fall, so I could plant them now, but they would be as slow as my brain when coming up with jokes. The seasons kind of suck for one crop in particular, however, that crop being sugarcane, because sugarcane is the only crop to make paper for books or bookshelves for enchanting, and it also is one of the few crops that you can't bone meal to help it grow. So I will have to wait until summer to obtain enough for the enchantment setup. Each season also I think has three phases, those being early, mid, and late. Each, each one lasts around eight days, so since we started in early spring, yeah, summer will take a while to get here, so hopefully I can find enough books another way. Anyway, enough with the boring nature facts, time for days 5 and 6. During these days I began to collect materials for my home, and let me just say I cannot wait for you guys to see how fantastic this home comes out. It truly is a work of art. Anyway, I collected diorite because this mod pack has a ton of new versions of stones that are all honestly pretty cool. I turned the diorite into some dark prismarine textured walls and began to build my magnum opus. I used stripped fur logs as the base and added the walls on top of them. I then put more stripped fur logs on the roof and even put in a sunroof and windows. So yeah, I may have lied about this being a beautiful work of art. This is probably honestly one of the worst things I have ever built in this game. This is why I don't really free build. I usually use tutorials, but clearly I don't really learn much from them. On day 7 I finished the house by adding a floor that's honestly better than the rest of the house. I then dubbed the house the shit shack and even added a new hanging sign to it. For the rest of day 7 I focused on making a basement to store all my junk considering the ugly structure up top is lacking in the size department. Wait, I mean it's above average in size but you know it just doesn't have anywhere. I don't want to cut clutter the place up with chests is what I'm trying to say. I had some trouble finding a place to put the basement because all of the layers below my house had a ton of water for, or water caves due to me being on an island. So I had to go all the way down to Y level 20. I decided eventually I want this basement to look even better than the actual house, because I actually made some good basements in other worlds before. I don't know why, but I struggle with building of structures more than underground terrain manipulation. On day 8, I kept working on expanding the basement and did some organizing of my materials. Not much to say here besides the fact that I was trying to tidy up the place like Captain Levi Ackerman taught me. Day 9 I finished sorting my chest and decided to go on one last adventure. I found another one of the golden sword pedestal structures and ended up leaving the sword behind because of its bad enchantment. I later stumbled upon a structure that had killed me more than one time in my attempts before this one. I looted the chest up top and got some decent loot, just some iron tools and bones, and then I went to the dungeon part of the structure which was packed full of zombie husk and witch spawners. I thought I could maybe break all the spawners but a witch and a baby husk proved me wrong. They chased me out and I ended up killing them both but was too traumatized to move on, like someone who had watched the Nina Tucker scene for the first time. So instead I gave the place a proper name or two and then left for more adventure that night.
Eventually, I stumbled across another giant structure and that I thought was also going to frick me up. But actually, it was just a weird village. The structure wasn't very safe from zombies, though, so I protected the villagers for a bit. But the only loot I could find were some fermented spider eyes from a chest. I also stumbled upon an ominous forest with cool trees and wither roses growing around. Maybe I'll use these in a future episode. Very soon, however, I found a real village with some cool new villager types. I found an alchemist that had nether wart growing outside and an oceanographer that had an aquarium in his house. I also found a waystone that I claimed, but left it here so I could travel back home later. The sun rised on day 10 and that led to my OBS hating me. I have almost no footage of day 10 or early 11. Basically all I did was find another village made of quartz and bricks with no waystone, and then I traveled back to the village from before and teleported home with their waystone. I then spent the night fighting endermen and hunting sheep for wool so I could make elevators. Luckily with the looting 2 sword, I got enough ender pearls. However, I couldn't get enough wool from shearing sheep. Then I remembered that I planted some flax and it turned into string and wool. So now I have elevators for my house down to my basement. Sorry for the inconvenience of the video. If you don't believe that I survived the last day and night, that's your choice and you don't have to believe me. But I'm gonna continue the series nonetheless if that's what I want to do. However, do know that if I was going to cheat, I would have been smarter about it. I don't think I have a big enough following for anyone to actually care, I just wanted to put this out there anyway. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the 10 days of Better Minecraft 1.20. If you did enjoy, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to check out this pack, it'll be in the description. And don't forget to suggest packs for me to play like this in the future. And let me know if you would like the 10 days or the one week better. I think 10 days is probably better because it lines up with 100 days, but I'll do whatever uh, people enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see you.